So good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to panel, uh, which is about the in-depth case study showing how companies can address sustainability challenges and how can they size their business opportunities. Uh, my name is uh, Michal Vesely. I work for JIC, and I'm going to be a moderator of today's session. Uh, and it should be interactive. Uh, so I encourage you to use the Slido to ask the question uh, which you want to ask on how to start, what needs to change, uh, what does it mean in practical terms to address the sustainability challenges. So please, you can prepare the questions now or later on, but prepare them. And now let me introduce our distinguished guests. Uh, Ms. Petra Busfald, uh, she's the CEO of and founder of Austrian-based company called Akarion. Uh, Petra started working in field of sustainability digitalization already 30 years ago. So she has a very rich expertise and experience track now. Welcome. <clears throat> Mr. Bushan. Nigel is the vice president of the global cost corporation SAP. Bushan runs the sustainable management development program, and in his career spanning over 23 years, uh, he uh, experienced software industry. Uh, he fulfilled a variety of roles, ranging from strategy definition products and large scale program management. So, welcome. And last not least, uh, Mr. Dan Hoyer. Uh, he's the CEO of Fair Venture and Impact Metrics. Uh, in uh, 2018, Dan started a company for uh, consultancy in sustainability called Fair Venture, based in Prague. And later in uh, 2021, Dan co created a startup, Impact Metrics. Both companies uh, experienced dynamic development in the last two years thanks to the general interest on in ESG. So welcome, Dan. <laughs> uh, and it was enough for, uh, from me for, for, for the beginning. And I want to give a floor to you now. Bushan, can you please share shortly, introduce what uh, trends SAP sees uh, in the market, what inquiries SAP gets from customers, partners, or end regulators? Thank you. Yeah, just taking the mic. Am I audible clearly yeah. behind? Okay. Thanks, Michal, first and foremost, for the nice introduction. And it's a pleasure to be with my esteemed co panelists today here. And I think JIC is doing a, a really fantastic job in bringing all of the ecosystem together. I think we learned a lot today. So hopefully, this session is also of value to you, uh, the audience. So in terms of the inquiries and in terms of the interests and everything, I can say the phone is ringing at SAP a lot for sustainability as well, right? Why? It's really clear, I mean, hardly a week goes by where we are not meeting the C-suite of, irrespective of the size, industry, location of, of customers, so really high interest, or analysts, or partners, a variety really of, of, of interest groups. And the reason is clear, isn't it? Sustainability is a top priority for the C-suite. It's a CEO priority. It's a priority for various regulators. We heard at length today uh, this, this nice debate in the afternoon. Also, as we saw in the research uh, note today, it's a very high interest and it's a very high priority for us as consumers in our day-to-day -day life, right? So consumer behavior is shifting. Organizations got to react. So it's really bubbling up to the list of top three priorities overall. And if I were to really say, of course, this is various queries and inquiries and concrete discussions we get at SAP across the globe, I would really classify this into three categories. So starting with, first and foremost, optimization, or rather really the compliance. I also know today that there was this, this note that compliance is, 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 is OK, and it's, it's already something in the past. Today's session is sustainability in practice. Let me tell you, in practice, the experience is different. Compliance is really important for, for companies. So companies ask us, especially with the amount of regulation that's, that's coming in, right? So be it just in the EU, things like the EU taxonomy, which is a classification system, as you know, or even really sharp piece of legislation to plug in the carbon leakage via CBAM, so carbon border adjustment mechanism, 
or really sharp, again, a piece of legislation that came from Germany and that will be effective next year is the River Cut and Soak First Fishman Gazette, so the Supplier Due Diligence Act, which holds companies responsible for the activities of their supply chain, right? So, uh, tremendous amount of innovative regulation that's really coming in, and if you just go in the finance side, we just spoke, Dan, today about CSRD, CFRD, TFTF, TCFD, SPTI, the whole alphabet soup, right? So, high amount of regulations are coming, and our customers are asking, how can we be compliant? How can we avoid the reputational risks when we do not feature this, right? So that's, that's, that's the first category of responses mm -hmm. or queries. The second is moving then towards really optimization. So this is based on the principle, what you cannot measure, you cannot manage, and what you cannot manage, you cannot mitigate. So you've got to really be specific on what you're measuring, and we also heard nice examples from the colleague uh, at Kingspan today. So customers are asking us very specific questions, mm -hmm. really sharp and specific questions. What's the, what's the footprint of my product? What is the waste that I'm generating? What's the packaging that I'm having? Mm -hmm. These are really questions that mm -hmm. they're asking us, right? Or how can my workforce be more inclusive and diverse, right? So these are the questions on optimization. And it's no wonder, right? I mean, it's, it's really, there is research that shows that, that, that organizations can save up to 60% of costs when they are more sustainable. I mean, SAP example is, is, is really very shining. We saved 700 million euros upward of that in the past three years just by focusing on climate action with our data centers and with our travel policies. So there is also a lot sense in this when we optimize. Yeah, so this is point number two last. And to, to, to sum this up quickly, the third category is of the enlightened organizations. So I'm sure many of them are sitting in this, mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 uh, in this crowd today who are thinking about sustainability transformation. So mm -hmm. really going step, so thinking about what are the opportunities, how can I grow, and the questions really are about, for example, at one end you have how can I bring, build in more innovative products, mm -hmm. to how can I introduce less elements of circular economy and therefore uh, go towards new business models, right? And again, the evidence is very, very clear. The amount of assets, we all know of figures, we all have favorite figures, so 35 trillion dollars of assets globally under management of ESG, that's a tremendous amount. We also heard today that there is a lot of startup money that's coming in, I can watch for that as well. So mm -hmm. there is a lot of uh, money or, or there is, there's, there's a lot of opportunity for growth, right? Mm -hmm. So. As a summary, I would like to say, along these three categories, the evidence from the queries, from the interactions that I'm privileged to have, uh, the evidence is clear. Sustainability drives business success. Absolutely clear. Why? Because it helps, it helps companies, first and foremost, grow. It's really about growth. It helps them to improve their brand. Let's not forget also the tremendously positive impact it has on employee motivation and motivated employees who connect to the purpose of the company are much more productive, right? Mm -hmm. So it has so many benefits and all of this while saving costs, right? So my last statement and then I stop. Sustainability is a differentiator. Companies see this more and more and this is what the evidence from the field shows. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess you might have some question. I, I, we heard uh, sustainability drives business success. Uh, it was presented from a position of global company, which is probably open to cooperation with startups or has the vision. So, Petra, do you have any question for Bushan? I have, I have. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think you did not mention since when this uh, drive has started. So, since when did you um, uh, realize that there are so many questions from customers and uh, what would you th uh, do you also maybe know that, that the kind of the share estimated share of questions that are around ESG today or around uh, sustainability. So since when and uh, how much, so which share? That would be interesting. Wonderful. I wish I could also present some data and so on, right? So, but I will then force on anecdotal evidence. Uh, the discussion, the locus of discussion is shifting more and more towards the C-suite. And I'm stressing on the C-suite because this is where let's face it, the big decisions take place, right? So it, it's moving from the queries from the individual sustainability departments or from the LOBs to a CFO, CSO, CDO, chief digital officer to the CEO level, right? So uh, this is evidence number one. Uh -huh. Second is more or less every major RFP request for proposal has sustainability tucked in somewhere or getting even more prominent. 
right? This is really important. We have big customers. I mean, you know who they are, right? They are constantly asking us uh, how can they be more sustainable. So better to sum up, it's A, the quality and the type of questions which are getting more specific. And I would say roughly 70 to 80 percent of the RFPs have some notion of sustainability tucked in either prominently or somewhere in between. That's huge, by the way, right? And this is happening in the past two years. In, in the past two years? In the past before. two years. Not it's, before. It's, not before, it was a trickle, it's a stream, it will mm -hmm. soon be a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's really growing. Okay. Dan, do you want a question as well? Yeah, thank you. I would like to have a question. Uh, you mentioned your clients, you mentioned your clients are asking you, who are the clients? I'm wondering like, if it's big companies, but also, but also SME, and if there's any difference between these groups. So, I mean, you know SAP's uh, image to work with uh, the Fortune 500 companies and the big companies and so on, right? What I like a lot is there is tremendous amount of interest from the SMEs. And this is very important for us as SAP. I mean, we know the figures as well, right? It's SMEs generate 50, more than 50% of the employment worldwide. 80% of the companies and above in the world are, are SMEs. Innovation largely comes from SMEs, so it's also important for us. So then I would say there is a significant and healthy interest from the SMEs. Also, if, if I just elaborate on one point and then I'm done, it's also because of the pressure coming from buyers on the suppliers, right? I already mentioned LKSG, the Liberated and Soap Fishing Gazettes. But also with forward-looking legislation like CBAM or even there are buyers. So SAP, for example, when we set out our RFPs to vendors and we work with a lot of SAPs, it's important for us that our vendors are really sustainable, right? Which means they are they don't employ unethical business practices, they have a good social impact, and so on. So uh, it's a fair amount of request, more and more from SAP. Thank you, thank you. Petra, can you share your story, please? Uh, yes, <laughs> that's why I'm here. <laughs> 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 uh, so, uh, um, the title, I think, um, as well of the session, so, or of the conference, in fact, so sustainability as a business opportunity is uh, very much uh, connected to my uh, personal business story. Um, because uh, our company, I found it together with a like-minded like colleague from university more than 20 years ago, uh, when the sustainability word didn't even exist. So, of course, it was another word at that time. <laughs> but uh, the content was what we wanted to do. So we wanted to focus on digital tools. So also here, another modern thing today. Uh, digital tools that do something with sustainability. And as we have been studying uh, mathematics, because there was no informatics at that time, <laughs> so also, so no sustainability, no informatics. Um, so uh, we wanted uh, to provide tools that calculate something that has something to do with uh, sustainability, so emissions, CO2 footprints, and all these things. So this was our mission. Uh, but I guess you can imagine that that, that was quite hard uh, around uh, 20, 22, 25 years ago. Uh, but still, uh, I think uh, we arrived. I mean, the first years was more um, contracts from, from public side, so ministries that had to do some awareness campaigns, things like that was our, were our first projects. Uh, so no interest at all from companies. Uh, so, and everybody, uh, we told our stories, uh, thought, what is that? I mean, working in sustainability, people do that only in their leisure time. They do that for free. They don't want money for that. So that was really exotic, and we really had also to defend to do something like this <laughs> somehow. Uh, and of course, it was not easy to grow in the beginning. So we grew recently, not in the beginning. Now we, are, uh, we have 20 employees, and I think that's, uh, that's quite nice. Uh, we also um, have a nice share of uh, women and men, although it's digitalization. Mm -hmm. It's still, uh, there are a lot of women also. Um, and uh, I think, uh, so this is why I was interested in, in the um, question from cast which type of customers. So I think, um, five to ten years also it began uh, that we had uh, inquiries from, from business, from companies 
that the sort of pioneers that were ESG reporting long before it became uh, obligatory or the perspective of becoming obligatory, what we heard today. Uh, so we also catered uh, for, the, for, the, for these uh, pioneers that started with that uh, early already. And yeah, it's, uh, it's nice uh, to have this long experience track and it's also nice to, to share this experience. And I think uh, everybody that wants to take uh, sustainability, sustainability as a business op opportunity today, I think of course it is, uh, no question today, but it was a question that time. And I'm really a little bit proud to have done it and to have gone through it until now because you could also give up on the way. <laughs> so, yeah. So That's my story. A short, thank shorter you. story. Thank you very much. <laughs> I understand you are running marathon and now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there is a success of your business. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do, do you have questions for Petra? Ushan. Maybe one, if I may, better. And I'm glad you did not give up and you kept up uh, really the fight. So let me ask you kind of a controversial question, right, about ESG metrics and so on. Do ESG metrics really work and do they help customers or organizations achieve their sustainability outcomes? Um, yes, I think so. Although, of course, we, uh, we observed that First, it's also a pain for, for everybody to, to collect this data. And, and that, so the first phase is more the pain of collecting the data. And then uh, more and more they uh, kind of um, detect um, the, the, the wonder and, and the, the power also of it and how to bring it into steering the company goals. And of course now as, as everybody is aware of it, so more or less, of course, it becomes also more this um, uh, steering characteristic. So, so I think, yes, uh, they, they really detect it and it's good. But of course, it needs a time. And so I think it's good uh, that companies start now uh, when it's not obligatory for everybody because then the pain phase is already done when it's really obligatory. So, and I think that's good. <laughs> Thank you. Dan, you might have also a question. Yeah, I actually yes. have a comment and then a question. Okay. <laughs> uh, because the, like metrics, how we can measure uh, sustainability when we want to measure carb um, I mean, climate change, we will measure carbon footprint. If we want to measure gender, we can measure um, like pay gap between gender, like gender pay gap. And, and if, we, if we will take all these metrics, we will take them together, we can get ESG metrics or ESG rating or how we can call it. And from my side, this is very, like, the, the basic metrics make sense. The ESG ratings is quite a construct and there mm. can be a lot, a lot of results. So this is, like, mm. my, my, my point. But what I'm interested in, that now we have climate change and carbon footprint and this is quite a topic and most of the companies already heard about it and they have their carbon footprint calculated and goals set. I'm wondering about biodiversity because you are the person who had to invite everything before it was set by European Union. So I'm, and now we, in European Union, we don't have any tool how we can measure biodiversity easily. We cannot really set a goal to, uh, to improve in it. So I'm wondering about your, your point, your, your opinion. It's a very long question. <laughs> I try to keep it short. I mean, I think it's really, uh, as you see, uh, something that uh, we live for, so um, sustainability metrics and uh, putting that into tools. And of course, uh, it was so for really a long time that this carbon footprinting and all that was kind of the lead indicator. But of course, carbon footprint is not the, not the whole story of sustainability. Uh, and I think that biodiversity is um, a neglected uh, dimension of sustainability and will, it will come up. I mean, the European Union has thought of it because it is part of the taxonomy goals, so that's, that's good, but it's the non-defined part <laughs> so, so far, <laughs> and it's not easy. Uh, but I think it will also evolve to uh, put it into, me into metrics, uh, measure some things, have, of course, qualitative indicators also. I think it's always this mixture of quantitative and qualitative uh, measures um, and indicators. So, yeah, I think it will also be important. I think what the one thing that is really complicated, and I think it's not possible, um, 
So we have been working on that in many research projects also. So the, the, the one and only sustainability indicator, so how, uh, what is my percentage of sustainability? I think that can only be wrong. Because uh, if you have, for instance, two companies both having 80%, what does it mean? I mean, is it because here we have a low, uh, the, the food, carbon footprint like this and the biodiversity metrics like this and the other, uh, the other way around for the other one. So it will not help. So, but this is something that uh, people are also like of wanting because it would be easy, of course. If you have two, then you compare, you know, you know the one that's better, you buy there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's not possible. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Now, Dan, I ask you, the floor is yours. Uh, and I, I know a little bit your business story because we work together in a business association called Change for the Better. But I'm, I'm interested in a specific thing. You received an investment recently, so I'm interested in what attracted the investors to invest into your business. Right. I will tell the story and then I will get to the answer. I will Super. be quick. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we actually, uh, my, my story started in on university, I, I studied sustainable development, more like the, all the politics and philosophy. Then I started working in NGO in 2017, uh, where we made a watchdog. We were watching companies, banks and uh, energy companies, what, what they do, what they finance, what they, where they build new coal power plant. And it didn't really make sense to me because the companies were the bad guys and there was no really, like, I didn't see the, the light in the end of the tunnel, like, so what, what, what we will do? And uh, so this was the topic uh, which I wanted to explore. We started a company in 20, uh, 2018 for a venture and we, con we consulted other companies how they can do sustainability. In other words, it was about making analysis, how they are at this moment, setting goals, identifying activities, what they can do, and then in the end they can make a report, ESG report, a sustainability report, or whatever it can be called, where they like, say everything what they did, uh, define what, what uh, goals they have, disclose all the non-financial data they, have, uh, they, they gathered. And this is actually the process of sustainability, and every company should do it every year, or in some, in some process they should circulate somehow and do it, and, and getting better, 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 and better, thanks to the goals and thanks to the politics and they, they have in, 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 like inside. Uh, okay, uh, 2021, we, set, uh, we started another company because there was already uh, quite a lot of data in Czech, Czech market, so we could gather, for example, carbon footprint or energy consumption or water consumption and compare it. So we could say who is better and who is not. It was very hard. It was not objective at all, but uh, we could start somehow s uh, compare and make some benchmarks and SWOT analysis. Uh, but still, in 2018, 19, 20, 21, it was not a good idea to make this business. It was more like NGO idea. Uh, <laughs> like we, we did it because it was our value, and uh, our clients were also companies whose value it was like sustainable. They wanted to be something sustainable because it was their niche, it was their value, and they wouldn't do the business another way. What happened in 21 and 22 is complete change of, of market, thanks to Euro European Union, thanks to maybe COVID, thanks to energy crisis. Uh, and uh, companies start to understand all the advantages you mentioned, like uh, that there is, I don't know, efficiency, optimization, uh, employee uh, and customer uh, interest and etc. And investors especially. Uh, and for us, it's very important because even though sustainability is our value and uh, we want to do it because it makes sense, we don't expect that every company will do it because it makes sense to help environment, but it has to make sense for them. And now it's happening and it makes sense for the company. So this is, this is the change. And I'm getting to the answer uh, with the investor. And this is also the, the, the view of the investors. They, mm -hmm. they know that there is something happening. They know that there, is, there are some goals and there are some activities of European Union, that in 2050 there should be all the companies 
sustainable, I mean carbon neutral, and it, it needs a lot of money, it needs a lot of effort, and somebody had to pay it, and mm -hmm. the investors and the banks want to pay it, they want to be who will help you to move on, to transform, and so for, uh, for them it's somehow start with this, with this uh, field, they believe that this will explore, and actually uh, we are in the country where it's not done yet. Maybe in Nordics they are closer. Here we are not so close. So it's much more opportunity actually for the companies because they can get much more competitive advantage. They can get the transformation will need much more effort and of course for the investors and for banks it's interesting. So that's why they believe that we have a future but also they are searching for every other company who has a future and who can uh, use this opportunity. Understand. Thank you. Uh, Petra, do you have a question for Dan? Um, uh, your clients, Dan, uh, when they arrive at your desk or somewhere, <laughs> are, they, uh, are they coming because they, they know already that they want to do something, want to have goals and want to go for this cycle optimization? Or are they, are they the client type that uh, is searching for, I don't know, a little bit uh, not knowing what, and you convince that sustainability is the business opportunity for them? Uh, well, hard to, hard to answer, it's, it's various, uh, but usually they know that something's happening and they want to start. And they come and they say, okay, we want this ESG report or even ESG audit, and we tell them this is not the start. We, if, we want, if you want to start, we should start from the beginning. So it's analysis, it's uh, calculating carbon footprint, for example, setting the goals, and really uh, like choosing topics we want to be better, which are relevant for us, because for IT it's completely different than from manufacturer, than from water treatment and other, other companies, so other sectors. So really focusing on what, 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 is, uh, what is relevant for them, and then uh, starting from the, from the scratch, and uh, yeah, so it's, it's very various. And usually it already depends on what is the, their motivation, if it's because of customers, because of investors, because of uh, client, uh, uh, sorry, uh, employees. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very different, and I could get to the detail that investors want ratings and etc. But yeah, it's it's this is the it's motivation driven, I would say. Okay. Thank you. Bushan, you might have also a question for Dan. Yeah, indeed, thank you, Michelle. So, uh, Dan, first and foremost, congrats that you get this, this round of uh, funding from the investors. It shows that you're on the right path. In the spirit of what you mentioned, that we are not done yet, right? So, what do you expect from large organizations and enterprises like SAP and the global chain, right? So, what, how best can we collaborate? Do you have some thoughts on that? Uh, I, I forgot to say that, of course, uh, from the, the investors expect also our scaling. So we are scaling, and we are we are not only consultancy anymore. We are we are developing some software. Uh, I would say uh, what we expect from SAP is is also competitive of ours. So we, what we expect is that you will get uh, leave some space for us as well. Uh, <laughs> 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 but. Uh, I think what Michal mentioned already, we, we started uh, this association Change for Better. It's based in Czech Republic. And they, we, we do a really cool thing. We do that there are big corporations, there are consultancy companies, there are SMEs, there are NGOs, there are academics. And this is what is needed because sustainability is not about competitiveness. It's about getting together and understand what SAP does, what the EU needs, what we are, what we need, what academics needs and also what NGO needs because they are those who are saying what actually the planet needs. And uh, so this maybe this, this like being active in association, being active like in discussion and in, in networking actually and, and to, to, to get the goals is, is uh, what, 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 uh, what works, what we expect. And what was the, I would say, the, the best thing we did in the association was actually like uh, educating SMEs in ESG Academy, it's a platform of short videos, 
where they get the basic information because this is we are in the in the phase of sustainability when we are we need to understand what's going on and what are the steps. So to to to, 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 to say it simply because we can talk very 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 complicated way, but we can also take a talk in simple way. May I respond to that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and so sustainability is such a massive and important problem. It's, we are talking about the future of our humanity, right? So it's, it's important that uh, all of us work together, and this is why when I said the phone is, is, is ringing at SAP, I'm really glad to say the amount of partnerships we have signed on the sustainability front, even with companies who are our competitors, but who are also competitors of each other, are working with us uh, because I think the realization is, is, is very strong, Petra, and you got this 20, 25 years ago, right? But it's coming in more and more that this problem is simply too big to be solved in silos. So we are seeing a tearing down of silos across organizations, across roles, and I think this is important. And if I want to also add one more comment to that, it would be large organization, because simply the problem space is so big and so immense, there will be white spaces which companies will say, we are not going into these white spaces because it's, 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 it's not our focus area and there is enough food on the table for all of us to have a decent lunch, right? And this is really important for the, for the future of humanity. So there are enough ways for us to collaborate and to solve this, this important problem. Yeah. Thank you very much. And let's proceed now to the second part of the discussion and that are the questions. I have a couple of questions pre-prepared myself, but it's much better if you ask questions, so please do use the Slido. I see there are already a couple of questions, because we have really interesting mix uh, here of the people from star tech startups from different fields, mainly IT, uh, SMEs, big corporations, uh, NGOs, academics, public sector, so, so your questions are the most, most, most interesting. And, uh, if we can switch to the slide, please. And there is one general question which I, I, I want to start, actually. Uh, what sustainability means to you in one sentence? Easy. <laughs> no, but I think it's important because we are discussing sustainability, so people have to understand what is it. May I start? Or, yeah. Sustainability is an outcome that is essential for the future security of humanity. It's more, so that, okay, one sentence, uh, done. But <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's an outcome. ESG is probably a means to reach that outcome. CSR is, is about governance, but in the end, it's, it's really about an outcome that is about the future success, survival, security of humanity, right? So it's, it's really about an outcome. Sustainability is an outcome, basically. Thank you, thank you. I have another one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think sustainability is a net, the natural rule of life organization, uh, what we have picked up rather late as human beings, uh, to be honest, or re-picked up because it was the natural life organization uh, yeah, some centuries before. <laughs> I will make a use of the official definition because it's quite clever, actually, it, it, even though it sounds stupid. Uh, sustainability is a way how to ensure that the future generation will, have, mm. will, will, will be able to live the same lives as, as we are. And that's why it's so non-specific that we have to, uh, we can include all the ESG and, and mm -hmm. uh, all the activities which are helping us to mm -hmm. improve the world. Thanks a lot. I see uh, one related from my perspective. Uh, should be the government a front runner in adoption of sustainability or should we leave it only in the hands of private sector? Should be the government a front runner in adoption of sustainability? Or should we leave it only in the hands of private sector? What's to, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah, anybody? Go ahead and then in the, pass it over. Yeah, okay, <laughs> let me give it a shot, right? Um, 
I mean, what what is what what is government in the end? Government is an institution that is created by us to govern our future. So it's it's an end. It really depends on us. I really believe, right, personally, and this is my opinion. Sustainability starts at home, at us, about my behavior, my choices day to day, and these choices are about trade-offs. It's, it's, it's not that simple. If it was that simple, all of us would have solved it, right? It's really about these trade-offs. Should I really walk to office or should I bike or run and what have you, right? And then pay the price of, of time and so on. So I am a big supporter of regulation, by the way. Regulation is the stick that is required to ensure that uh, the compliance and the associated risks are done. Absolutely, compliance and the government role is important. But true change starts from the individual. So in the end, mm -hmm. as a total individual answer, not SAP and not a corporate answer, I would say change starts at home. It's about my individual behavior. And then I could also influence my government, my MP and my uh, reps to say I want better action, right? So it's, it's about the individual for me. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with everything. <laughs> and uh, I would pick, like to pick up the front runner word because I think in addition, it also needs these front runners. And I think they need to come also from all sectors, as we said, that everybody has to cooperate and uh, work together. So I think we need front runners uh -huh. from everywhere. So from public sector, uh -huh. government, and, and private and business and everywhere. Uh -huh. Yeah. I want to build on it, actually. What do you think is the role of business leaders nowadays? Now that's for you. I think that, um, for the, to, to the first question, uh, it's, of course, it's not so simple like uh, it is written. Mm. That there should be some barriers, and then we can lay, leave the, the private sector to show us all the innovation and like they will be the be best how they can improve the world of course that's that's why we have companies but uh, uh, otherwise all of it have to get together and not just government and, and private sector but also public sector and and uh, academics and etc so i would say it's a, it's also a process ngos and academics were talking about that 50 years maybe and now uh, Governments are getting to it, setting the barriers, and companies can start scaling it up. Uh, I don't want to answer the business yeah, leaders' question. <laughs> if anybody wants, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think the role of business leaders is extremely critical. So all those leaders, and we know we have a very high proportion of leaders today in this in, the, in this room is so the role is to set clear targets and to hold yourselves and your teams accountable towards that, right? So that would be the most important goal. If the CEO or the C-suite, if they don't set clear, measurable targets, ambitions, and initiatives, and hold themselves and the team accountable, nothing is going to change, right? So it's, it's all about really agreeing that this is a top priority and executing on it. Mm -hmm. This is the role of the leaders. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Then there is a question on uh, customers. We see in the uh, first presentation today that the customers are really important. And the question is, customers demand more sustainable products, but the information asymmetry between them and the producer is huge. How can they know this is not a greenwashing? That's a good one. And I see plus four, so maybe I start again and then we, we pass it uh -huh. over. Actually, I, I really liked uh, the research note shown uh, by Frederick uh, in the keynote today because it also hit through a lot of points that we see in terms of customer inquiries, right? So I can give a plus one uh, to that. Now to the specific question, the information asymmetry, well, I would say, and I'm biased as an SAP employee here, a lot depends on primary data. So how can you really work on primary data that comes from the system of record? So the slogan that we have is, is work with actuals and not averages. Anybody can take a set of, actual, of, of averages, multiply them by LCAs, the life cycle assessment tools, and come out with a value that is, I don't know, depending on your point of view, very far from the ballpark or close to it, right? So, I, and by the way, this is also where software companies and digital has a big role 
to bring in more and more of sustainability data or sustainability aspects into data and get really sharp and clean data sets which you can work on on, on really the optimization, right? So it, it really it's important to get the data. So in summary, organizations need to work with primary data as much as possible. They also need to demand to their suppliers to give in as much as data as possible about compliance in terms of human rights, in terms of child labor, and so on. Operational safety, for example, right? I was honored to meet a customer recently who prioritized the number of hours lost due to injury. So they wanted to really reduce the number of hours lost due to injury uh, as one of their top metric. And this was coming from uh, success factors and the EHS system of SAP, right? So uh, summary, as much as possible, work with primary data, mm -hmm. work, where, uh, work in the systems where data gets generated, and make the data accessible. Make sustainability data accessible and reliable. That's how I would answer. So it's a long answer, I know. But uh, it's also not a simple question. <laughs> um, Anybody wants to add? Uh, yeah, I would add something. I think, yeah, I agree. Primary data is good. But I think in ESG uh, data management, it's not possible to have 100% primary mm. data. Uh, so this is why I would like to add uh, transparency and documentation. So if you don't use primary data, then please say it because then it's no greenwashing. So I think this is uh, the most important um, second thing to, to follow. Yeah. I also like the question very much. Uh, <laughs> and actually, what, this is what happened, was, was happening like before, that uh, customers were interested in sustainability, so you put it in green can, and it was sustainable, actually. And uh, no, the customer, was, there was no way how he could somehow like, check it. And this is changing with investors because you cannot really f make a fool of, out of the investor as the same way as a, with a customer. So now you have to really get the primary data, make the ESG reports, and the investor will look at it and say, okay, it's, it's good or, or it's actually not good at all. Uh, in this case, that's why we have certifications actually, like Fairtrade, like um, Rainforest Alliance, and etc. So th this is how you can make a proof that it's really sustainable, that you will get some certification, you can get certification for the product, for the material, for also for the, for the whole company. Not saying that all certifications are a good, good solution. There are, of course, the certification needs as much product and as much clients as possible, so they are sometimes vag. It's a complicated uh, uh, field as well, but the certifications are, are actually the solution for, for the clients. Uh, for the customers, sorry. Thank you. There, there is the next is, from my perspective, data related. And uh, if you can recommend a low cost free application web page, uh, how to ex uh, estimate carbon or measure carbon footprint for a small company. Uh, actually, from the point of view of calculation, a carbon footprint, there are only a few in, uh, important things if you are very small and uh, if we don't know your, your area of, of business and it's how much energy you pr uh, consume, how much gas and oil you consume and how much natural gas you consume and heat. And that, this, is, this is it. So there are plenty of cal calculations in, in website where you can just uh, place how much uh, these amounts and you will get the CO2 carbon footprint. This is the sh simple and short story. And then there is the more complicated other story that uh, you have also, f you, you take flights, you have uh, your, your um, uh, suppliers from India and from China and uh, the, 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 the materials are, are, are traveling. And you should also calculate this. But if we are talking about small company who want to somehow just get the first, first sight, it's just about energy you, you, you consume, and it's, uh, I'm, I cannot say now, I, I think that in Czech there is Uhlíková Stopatočka CZ or something like this. It's, I would say, quite easy to, to Google it. Uh, my tips? recommendation would be uh, to do it step by step. So, I mm. mean, you, you described already the steps, so uh, start with a little bit and uh, extend. And yeah, that's uh, what we also do as you do. Uh, to provide tools and, and, and consultancy for that. Mm. So I think it's not that expensive. Thank you. 
And then there is a really popular question, and it goes back to the definition of uh, sustainability, actually. Is there any clear vision and common understanding what we want to sustain? Amount of people, quality of life, taste of beer. <laughs> okay, I again take a shot, right? And I can only quote uh, Mahatma Gandhi, the original rock star of sustainability, who said there is enough on this planet to satisfy everybody's need, but not enough to satisfy a single person's greed. So I would say, let's really get the basic needs done. So we need to sustain the basic needs of, of every individual, the roof on the head, food on the plate, and a hot house or a heated house. Beer would also be good, but I would really say, how can we arrive at a common minimum living standard for everybody across the world? And how do we sustain this for future generations, right? So that's what we need to sustain. Okay. If I would be greedy businessman, uh, I would like to sustain my company, and this is what we have to look at, and uh, it means that I have to check my, imp uh, my impacts, ah. my risks, and uh, lower the impacts because otherwise there will be regulation, there will be customers, there will be investors who don't want to invest in me, and then our risks like climate change, like loss, loss of biodiversity, like gender pay gap, which will uh, like change of of uh, customers' uh, feelings and, and preferences. And this I have to all somehow manage and uh, be winner of the situation, get advantage of in sustainability, use the opportunity. And this is, if every company will sustain in this way, it will be sustainable. <laughs> Thank you. Petra? Do you want to answer that? I think it's a really difficult question. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think uh, they're very nice questions, so I think that's, uh, that's a uh, congratulation to the audience. <laughs> you know? uh, because this one is really difficult, because uh, also, also if you ask biologists, they would say there is no kind of fair uh, optimum on, on the planet, so that's not existing. Uh, so, and I think this is the answer to that. There is no fair optimum. That's really a decision of what to sustain. And, and I think this is a, a societal decision to take. And I think uh, we have to take, take it in a democratic way. And a democratic way would uh, lead to what you said, so uh, a fair living standard for, uh, for everybody. Um, yeah. So, but that's really difficult. Thank you. Thank you. I will use the opportunity to uh, and privilege to ask the last question <laughs> and, uh, because we should finish a couple of minutes. Uh, uh, because the, most of the people here are from tech companies, uh, IT or uh, software hardware uh, companies. So what concrete opportunities do you see as the most promising at, at the changing market? in relation to sustainability for them. I actually expected that you, uh, sorry, I actually expected that you will ask the question, so I made a list of, of things. <laughs> <laughs> Super. <laughs> <laughs> but the phone is not really working now. Uh, the thing is that uh, sustainability is about materiality. It means that uh, you should tackle the things which are material for you, which are important for your business. For some business it can be climate change, for some other business it can be something else like biodiversity. Uh, for in this case of IT, uh, of course you will not uh, deal with biodiversity, you will not deal with amount of water you consume and you will, you will laugh about these topics like, okay, so we will, uh, we will not wash our hands and uh, now we will be sustainable. Uh, but in the sector of, of IT, I have five lists of five topics which are actually like you should focus, and it's like the future of sustainability in this in this area. So I will read them. Uh, the first is protection in, of privacy and relevant data protection. So mm. you should deal with uh, there's some social problem, and this is IT can be the solution. Very similar public safety. We can deal with this problem every day, even even now, that there is, we, we don't know what our, with our data, 
but uh, if, if you will somehow develop some software, if it's actually safe for the public or not. Uh, gender and diver diversity, this is uh, about the employees. Human rights in supply chain, all the supply chains goes to Asia. And um, somebody, some, some people doesn't believe, don't believe it, but really the human rights are a big issue. There are so many slaves in, in, in Asia like never before. So this is really a huge issue and, and there is, there is needs to, to change it because it's also a risk for the companies if there was something happened bad, it's, it, it, will have, it, it will influence Europe as well. And this last thing is environmental, finally, sourcing, sourcing, sourcing materials conflict. So it's conflict about sourcing materials. Uh, as gold, for example, these valuable, valuable metals, uh, these are the conflict materials, there are wars because of them. And again, you can, you, you can be using some of the materials which are very, very like, dirty in the way there are problems, social problems, also, also environmental problems. I think batteries and immobility e is quite a good example of, of that we are. Uh, dealing with one problem, but also we have other problems suddenly and we have to deal with them as well. I think it's very nice that Dan prepared the list. <laughs> I have the headlines for the list <laughs> because I would have answered um, two, two opportunities to do. So one, uh, you provide a sustainable product or service, which is possible by IT means. So do you provide some product service that does that, or you provide a product or service that helps others to become sustainable. And I think uh, the five concrete suggestions have come from Dan. Thank you. It's difficult to add to what both of you have, have said, so let me take then a very humble addition. Be obsessed with data. So it's really, the at least in my experience, what separates sustainability leaders from the also ran is the focus on data, accurate data, and then opening up opportunities across the value chain, like carbon data exchange, or even up thing, if you think about carbon accounting, as more and more reporting goes into carbon accounting, that's also going to be a big challenge. So uh, be obsessed with data. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you all. Uh, we have to finish now, so thank you for interesting thoughts. Uh, uh, interesting ideas you presented. Thank you all for interesting questions and there are still more uh, but the guests will stay here so you can discuss with them individually uh, and I have just two reminders at the end there is no coffee break now so, so and, and the continue uh, the program continues down there in five minutes so please go immediately uh, down there and you can still uh, vote for the best pitch of the startup. So thank you very much uh, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you.